All right, Changeman, greetings. I've got for you a video on how to do constructions as we've discussed in class. There's going to be four constructions that are potentially going to show up on your chapter two exam. Make sure you have the following materials. You're going to need to have this compass. Remember the parts of it, we have the needle and the point. The space in between those is called the radius. My compass with a set screw here at the hinge so that I'm able to tighten it. So as I'm swiveling around the needle that uh, this point doesn't kind of dance around. <clears throat> Moreover, I have a protractor that I'm gonna use exclusively as a straight edge. I'm not gonna measure angles with it. I'm just gonna use it to get straight lines. First one that we're gonna utilize is called the copy of segment construction. Remember, we're gonna start with a segment of any length. Doesn't matter if it's two or three inches, um, I'm going to make sure that we have the endpoints of this line segment illustrated very clearly. So in order to copy this, we just need a point somewhere, uh, just not on that line segment. <clears throat> very straightforward. We're going to go to this line segment we want to copy. We're going to take the needle and we're going to spread the point so that this compass has a radius that's the exact same width. Once I've done that, I'm gonna move my needle over here onto this other point. And then I'm gonna make a, an arc mark. Now, anywhere from this point to that arc mark, is a segment of the exact same length. So these two are congruent. Next, we're going to do <clears throat> the midpoint construction, which is also the perpendicular bisector simultaneously. Here's how this works. Again, I'm just going to take a line segment of some length. If this were to appear on your test, which it very well may, you are going to be provided that line segment. In order to bisect this line segment, I need to put my needle onto some of one of the two endpoints. Now I'm gonna spread the radius. This is where I have some freedom and this can sometimes be a little bit intimidating, but I'm gonna to, to estimate roughly where my midpoint is with my finger. And I need to make my radius be more than halfway. So just beyond where the radius is to the entire length of the segment but not past where this entire whole segment length is, just to make my life a little easier. So I'm gonna make this thing somewhere between two thirds and three quarters of the length, the radius that is, of the entire line segment. Once I've done that, I'm going to swivel on my needle and make an arc. Once I've done that, I'm gonna flip this around. Do not change the, light, the width of your radius. Put my needle onto my other end point, swivel, and I hope you notice in the video, in this video, that as I'm making each of these swivels, I'm holding my compass down here by the needle as I'm swiveling. Okay, it makes it a little bit easier for me. Make sure that you're practicing. You may even want to practice on your own, just making circles, um, just with making a clean swivel uh, with your compass. Okay. Now you've seen here. This is kind of like an, an, uh, an eye. Uh, E Y E I, right? And I have two intersections of these arcs. If I connect these two intersections right here, this is my midpoint, which is simultaneously a right angle. <clears throat> Good construction. I really like that one. Next, we're going to do the copy and angle construction. If you were to do this one, you'll be provided the angle. I think the angles that are easiest, I hate saying easy because it's a matter of opinion, uh, but I, I, I think the ones that it's, it's easier for you to accomplish this with is with an acute angle. Notice what an angle is. It's two rays that are gonna share <clears throat> an endpoint, and that endpoint is what we call the vertex. So the vertex, the angle. And this is the angle itself. And we're trying to figure out how much this thing is, is you know, quote unquote, spread apart. 
So what we're going to be given here, or what we need to create, only thing you may be given is a point to work with. If I have a point to work off of, what I need to do first is create effectively the bottom uh, ray. It doesn't need to be the same length. It just needs to be, right? This one's clearly longer than this top one. But this guy right here, I just need to create him. It doesn't have to be parallel. He just needs to be away from this angle. So question is, is how wide is this portion right here? So what we're going to do is I'm going to get my compass. It's going to be some length. I don't want to make it too long for my radius. I don't want it too, like the width of my radius to be too wide. I don't want it to be too skinny because when it's really, really skinny, it's very difficult to swivel on your needle. But I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer here, and I'm going to make an arc that I'm going to work to copy down here. So I'm going to bring my needle down to my future vertex right onto that endpoint of my other ray. And then I'm just going to make an arc. Okay. Once I've done that, what I really need to do now is I need to copy this. It's kind of like the copy of segment construction. I need to copy the width of this arc. So I need to adjust my compass right here, right? Where that my needle is on one end of the intersection. I like to put it on the bottom because I'm going to put it right here eventually, right? And then um, I'm going to adjust the width so that here my point is also at the upper intersection of this side of the angle and that arc that I made. So you guys can see where I've put this. Um, once I've got this dialed in, needle's going to move down here. And I'm going to swivel just so I can get my second mark here. This intersection is the key. If I go and draw a ray starting at this endpoint through this intersection, I've created identical arcs. Last uh, construction to show you <clears throat> is the angle bisector constructor construction. All right. So again, you would be given on your test. If not, you have to create this on your own, an angle, and we're going to work with another acute angle. Two rays, and they share this uh, end point together. Remember what a bisector is. It means it's bisect by two sector, right, two sections. I'm going to make two equal sections. And that's the key part is that they're equal. Just because it gets divided into two parts, doesn't mean that something is equal. I want you uh, gentlemen to remember this as you guys are doing uh, proofs, for example. Um, because very commonly people misuse this term bisector or they just seem to be something is in two parts to take bisector. Last thing we're gonna do here is that we're gonna do like we did up above with the copy and angle construction. And I'm gonna put the needle here on my vertex and I'm gonna make another arc. Here's my arc. And then what I need to do here is I'm not going to worry about making exactly this uh, width. I can do that, right? Or I can go anywhere that's beyond halfway, kind of like I did with the uh, perpendicular bisector or midpoint construction. So here, um, I think the easiest thing to remember is just like I did up above copy and angle construction, I'm going to uh, spread my, my radius to be the width of that arc. The swivel on the needle, but I need to do this up above here. So um, I'm going to swivel, and then I'm going to flip around my compass, keep the same fixed width. I'm going to put the needle on that other intersection, and I'm going to swivel. And if I connect from my vertex through that intersection of those two arcs, I have made two uh, equal angles. So there we go. This is your uh, angle bisector construction. Those are the four. Good luck if you have any questions. Please feel free to contact me.